My name is Chuka Obi. I am the creative director of Inside Publicis, and this is the process of the Saka Idon Port ad. My number than the portable, it means say, I think I carry am come to MTN. Easy, to enjoy the job with the juego, get the part two. Uh -huh. The number where you they use now and before carry the go, yeah. I don't pop, I don't pop. Long, long ago, I say long ago because it's like seven years now, which is why I'm wondering why this the ad they chose, but that's by the way. Okay, so. A long time ago, I used to work at a company called DDB. Not so long anyway, but this ad is really long ago. And at DDB, one of our major clients was MTN. The great reckoning came, and that was what was known as MNP, Mobile Number Portability. Now, what this obviously meant was people could carry their numbers and go to any network. As the biggest player in the game, the most hit naturally was going to be MTN. So the question was, how were we going to convince and show people that they were already on the best network as against trying to hop onto the smaller players, challenges? So after a lot of back and forth brainstorming and all, we decided, we decided instead of taking a stance of trying to let you know that, look, you're already, you know, there's nothing out there for you, which is pretty much a normal expected space, we landed on the idea that we are so much the right answer or the right network to be on that everybody is dying to come on to MTN. So it's not a case of you saying you should stay here, you're the best. It's that everybody who's on other, every other network is trying to get here. So what better way to say it than to find the symbols of the other networks? Now, at this time, there weren't any networks given MTN problems the way Etisalat was. And this was because Etisalat, as the underdog in the entire market, were going very full frontal. They got a guy, Hafiz Oshori, who is better known as Saka, and he was their mascot, as it were. He wasn't a brand ambassador, that's, we'll get to that later. He was their mascot, and they used him for all their ads. And they would actually make ads throwing jibes at MTN. They would use MTN colors and you know, make jibes at it. Or they would even mimic MTN ads that have run before. I think matters came to a head when they actually had a guy in their ad that looked like Osofia because Osofia was in an MTN ad previously. So I said that we're going to make this guy the face. So the first guy that was going to hop onto MTN once MNP started was going to be Saka. It was a pipe dream at first when I came up with it. Because how were you going to get this guy to get off a contract? And then we found out. He had no contract. How the oh, did this happen? And we checked and found out that at least a lot felt that Mr. Sakar it was not premium enough to be a brand ambassador for the brand. It was great for association for when they were doing stuff for the mass market, but not good enough to be the face of a young, vibrant brand. Perfect for us. So what we did was go and meet Mr. Saka and let him know that instead of the amount of money, which I will not stipulate, that he was getting for his projects, his itty bitty projects with at least a lot, we would give him a proper contract. And he would be a brand ambassador for MTN. So in the dead of night, while everybody slept, six officers, not military officers, but revolutionary officers nonetheless, sat and plotted and signed Saka onto MTN. The next part of the plan was to have a video or a film or some communication that was worthy of this great feat we had achieved. Turns out I had written the ad before we signed Saka. So I had the lyrics of the song and all that. And I got a friend of mine whose name is Ray, Ray X, 
to produce the song. What I did was I gave the song to two different people. I gave two songs to two different people. One guy, his name is EXO, absolutely excellent music producer. So I gave him a song that was a bit more upscale. And I gave Ray X a song that was a bit more down market. People think Saka sang I Don't Pot. He did not. The voice you hear on the song is a guy called Vili. So, yeah, it sounds a lot like Saka, but it was not. When we went to MTN with the song, I remember distinctly that the MTN team were like, that's exactly their reaction. They were like, no, you know, it's too ras, it's too this. Even my guys were like, no, Chuka, it's, it's ras. I was like, yes, that's the entire point. He said, like, no, play, play your other one, what I so did. I played it, it's a beautiful song. You know, it was pigeon too, but it was well done, you know, really well sang and all. So yeah, yeah, that. I said, mm -mm, that one is great, we use it for other things. But see, this one, this Raz one, this is the one. So I now, as I told my boss at the time, Igbo, shout out to Igbo Mario B, because he believed in the madness that I was trying to come up with. And shout out to Tunde Sule, my creative director at the time. Um, to the point that I can say all the brokering of the deal that we brought Saka in was done by Igbo. And when I, I was actually lying in bed, it was during Lent, which is my, my fast period too. So I was lying in bed when it came to me clearly that, you know, it was Saka that was going to sing what Vili had sang. And I shared it, I just sent my boss, sent Igbo a text. I just sent him text and I was just replying, oh fine, we'll do it, oh fine, we'll do it. And that's why I was just going, and I was a junior guy. But, you know, he believed in what I was trying to do and he was making it happen because he had the muscle to do it and he was doing it. We decided to shoot the video. And we shot the video, you know, it was like, this is like top secret, you know. So if you knew that we were shooting this video, it was two things. Either you had signed a blood covenant or you were killed. It's one of the above. There was no in between. So, anyway, I'm just joking, but yeah. It was shot by AVF and... When the video was done, and we were raring to go, and then we got a, a message from um, NCC that they had postponed um, and MNP. So now we had a secret that we had to find a way of keeping until whenever the new date was. Finally, they find, the day of reckoning came. And I remember I was at my house, my, I, lived, I was living with my parents at the time, and Social media wasn't as big as it is now. This was 2013. I wasn't on Twitter. Um, all I had, as far as social media was concerned, was Facebook and BlackBerry Messenger. So I was just following my BlackBerry Messenger updates. As my friend and colleague, and at the time, um, lead digital content person at DDB, Ariola, she put up the video and there's like, as we go into the era of mobile number portability, guess who's the first person to port? None other than Saka. And the video was on YouTube. I should put the link out, I put it on Facebook. And I just have seen the comments rolling down on Blackberry Messenger on the, on the status. And it was beautiful to see. At the time, I had just gotten my own place. So, yes, I got my own place, but I stayed over at my parents' place that night. Next day, I went to where I just gotten as my new place, which was in the island, got some things. I was heading back to the office, and I was receiving calls. My phone was buzzing. And some people from my sister were actually calling me, too. And somebody said, Chuka. Hmm? Chuka. Hmm? Are you the one that potted our Saka? Yes. Eh? Yes. Okay. It's painting also, but it's nice. And more and more of that. Is it my favorite um, ad? Is it the favorite thing I've ever done? No, it's not. Um, quite a few ads I, I love 
and a few campaigns I love far more than that campaign, though that's actually the most popular one. But I think what hurts the most is that all my absolute favorite campaigns are still ideas. There's an ad I'm really hoping comes out really soon. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. But it's for a company called Travel Better. It was shot a while ago. If it ever comes out, I'll be like, yes, I did an ad. I think that's one of the few ads I actually feel like that. Because really when I see an ad that I've done, I actually don't feel a lot. I don't feel anything. I mean, I like to perform bad guy. But then I see other people, you know, be like, ah, oh, smile, smile, smile. And my sister will be like, you're proud. And I'll be like, I'm not proud, I'm arrogant. There's a difference. I have to give a huge shout out to the team at MTN at the time, and especially the CMO at the time, Larry Annette. He was a madman, literally a madman. He wanted to do mad things. So he was, I honestly used to feel that if anybody else had been CMO at the time, this idea or that idea probably would never have flown. But speaking of flown, Larry actually was the guy behind MTN giving out a plane. Yeah, so that kind of crazy, with my kind of crazy, was perfect. So here's to more crazy and more foolishness.